Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. Thank you for joining me. If you're new to this channel, you're very welcome. And of course, if you're a regular visitor, well, welcome back again. There are a number of times when I've wanted to use an antenna on various bands. I don't want just a single band antenna. And I think as we go into this uh, upward spiral of the sunspot cycle, when conditions are very, very good at times, we need to be fairly agile. And if you're out portable, or indeed at home in a small garden, you want to work DX, then the bands to operate on are the higher bands, 20 meters, 17 meters, 15 meters, 12 meters, and 10 meters. And it gives you quite a choice of bands. But of course, the antenna is going to limit you to the band you can operate on. If you're going to go out portable, you might take a 20 meter dipole and erect it as an inverted V and it'll work fine. Same on the other bands. But, you know, if 20 meters is not particularly good and 10 meters is wide open, which can happen, particularly in the summer months with sporadic E, then you want to go on to 10 meters. Well, your 20 meter dipole is not going to enable you to operate on 10 meters. And the same applies to the other bands. And you know, sometimes I've been out portable and I've switched on the rig and I've found there's a contest on. So 20 meters is chock-a-block with signals and the same on 15 and the same on 10 if it's open. So the bands to operate on, of course, are the walk bands. If you don't want to operate in the contest, go on the walk bands, which is 17 meters and 12 meters because they don't have contests on those bands and they're nice and quiet. But you need an antenna that's agile. Now you can have antennas with traps in all sorts of gizmos, which is fine, but you really ideally want to be totally, totally agile and operate on any of those bands. Wouldn't it be nice to operate on 20, 17, 15 meters, 12 meters and 10 meters? Be great, operate on any band you like and as conditions change, so you can change bands. Well, the simple way to do that is to use a doublet antenna. Now I've covered doublets before, but I'm going to cover it in a slightly different way this time, because a doublet does enable you to operate on various bands. Now, if you, for example, have a doublet that uh, is, let's say, let's say it's it basically the top section is um, 32, 33 foot long. Sorry, it's an imperial, but that's the way I work. That's a dipole on 20 meters. You've got, a, you've got 16 foot either side, give or take, and that's a dipole on 20 meters. But with a doublet operation fed with balance line or open wire feeder, then you can actually also operate that antenna on other bands. You can go down to 17, 15, 12, and 10. So that's the basis really of an antenna that is agile. But there's one other thing that antenna could be made even shorter. Because, you know, if you reduce the antenna to say a 3 8 wave length, which on 20 meters would give or take be about 24 foot, so that's reduced diameter, that will still work efficiently on 20 meters and on 17, 12, uh, uh, tw 17 uh, 15, 12 and 10. So even a shortened antenna to a degree can work on a fundamental band. So as I say, in 20 meters, the normal length is 16 foot, uh, either side, 32 foot, 33 foot, give or take. But if we reduce that to 24 foot, it still operates on the 20 meter band. And it's ideal if you've got a small garden, and also if you go out portal or want an inverted V and you don't want to have too much wire or take up too much space. So let's take a closer look at what you need in order to achieve that agility on the HF bands. Right, let's draw the basic doublet. And I'm going to go for an inverted V. I'm going to imagine that I'm out portable and I'm going to have an inverted V doublet. So we need two elements there. And I'm going to suppose that I've got restricted space. So I'm going to make those legs 12 foot each. Now with a doublet you need to feed it with balance line and the favourite balance line is 450 ohm ladder line. 450 ohm ladder line. 
And that feeder can be basically any length you like. The good thing about this type of feeder is that there's virtually no loss at all. So it's a very efficient antenna. And because we're working, uh, for example, on 20 meters, this is only a 3.8 um, wavelength of wire, but it is virtually as efficient as a full size. So reducing that down to 12 foot each leg or 24 foot is uh, not a problem at all. It'll still work very well on 20 meters. Now, the one thing that you do need with a balanced line is a means of interfacing it with your transceiver, which we'll put down there. And because there's various reactances at the end of that line, depending on how, length, how long it is and which frequency you operate on, you do really need to invest in an antenna tuner unit. And I'll come back to that uh, a bit later in this video. So you've got your ladder line, goes into your antenna tuner unit, and the output of that, which is 50 ohms, goes into your transceiver. And then we have an agile antenna. In actual fact, this antenna will cover 20, 17, 15, 12, 10 meters. And if your antenna tuner has the capability, also operate on 6 meters. And what sort of radiation pattern do we get? Well, if we're looking down on the antenna, that's the center point there, that's the feeder. And then we've got our inverted Vs going down there. Basically, we start off with a dipole pattern, which is rather like that. Sorry about the drawing, it's not particularly accurate, but it gives you the idea. That's basically a dipole pattern. As we raise the frequency, as we operate on 17, 15, uh, 12 and 10, we start to get multiple lobes like that. So the radiation pattern changes as we go higher in frequency. But really and truly, you don't need to worry too much about that because if you've got an inverted V, it starts to become omnidirectional and the, the pattern becomes quite complex. But best bear in mind that the pattern will change and sometimes that will work in your, to, to your advantage. Now, when it comes to antenna tuners, I tend to favor a tuner which um, is fairly simple and I use a separate ballon. The reason I do that is because I like to have a bit of coax cable coming from the tuner to the uh, through the window or through the wall to a ballon just outside. And so just a simple tuner like this LDG tuner here. This is uh, the one that uh, I use most frequently, it's rated at 100 watts, it'll handle 100 watts very easily actually. And I then have a short length of coax cable going from the tuner to through the wall to a ballon just outside and that, that works well. And then you have the balance line connected to the ballon which is just outside um, the house here. And then a length of coax cable, uh, about two or three meters, um, through the wall and that goes into the antenna tuner here and that works very well. This is an auto antenna tuner. Again, I favour the auto antenna tuner because it's it's quick and um, it's, uh, it's a, a very simple way of getting a good match. So the uh, lineup is the antenna, balance line from the antenna as long as you like to a ballon just outside the house and then a short length of coax cable from that ballon through the wall into the ATU. And then of course the uh, output from the ATU goes straight in, into your transceiver. Always remember that when you're using an external antenna tuner, do switch off the internal antenna tuner and your transceiver, otherwise you'll get all sorts of <laughs> funny results. Of course, if you own one of the Zigu X6100s, you won't need an antenna tuner because this has got an antenna tuner built in and it's very wide ranging. You should find that simply connecting a ballon between the uh, 450 lead line and the transceiver is all you need. The internal ATU should take care. So there we have it, an agile antenna, an antenna that will cover 
all the HF bands and it'll enable you to quickly change bands as conditions uh, dictate and uh, it's very uh, I, it's very much a, a portable antenna or a home station antenna if you've got a small garden it's another example of how you can get a very small antenna into a pretty small garden and as regards I, I tend to favor the inverted V because it just needs a single support if you're out portable then use one of the spider poles the um, fiberglass poles um, if you're at home well of course you may have some facilities uh, hanging it from a tree or you may have some other facilities basically um, all you need is a single support there's nothing to um, stop you using it horizontally as a conventional horizontal dipole that's fine uh, the reason I've gone for the Vertiv V is because it takes up less room and uh, the height well the height the higher the better generally speaking but bear in mind that uh, the sort of general reference point is uh, half wave above the ground and on 10 meters a half wave is only about 16 foot above ground so um, on uh, 10 meters you'll get some very good results but never worry about the height of the antenna don't worry if you can't get it as high as people tell you it should be an antenna will work at any height the only thing that changes is basically the the, the angle of radiation which dictates uh, how far you're going to work but anyway just don't worry about height do what you can best height you can get and uh, you'll have some great fun so that's the HF portable antenna hope it's been informative thanks for your support on this channel much appreciated don't forget to press the subscribe button and as usual i look forward to seeing you in the next video bye for now you take care <music>